John tells us at the beginning of Revelation that the visions that he sees are of events that are about to happen. They're going to happen soon. Jesus is coming quickly. These are things that will shortly take place. And we have to see the messages to the seven churches of Asia Minor in that context. Jesus is addressing these seven churches, which are uh, in the in-between place between Jerusalem and the, the, uh, the center of the Roman Empire. They're in that uh, kind of marginal place. These seven churches are not prepared for the coming of Jesus. They're not prepared for the collapse of the world that is on the horizon. And the messages to the churches have the premise that this is going to happen soon and that the churches need to be prepared uh, to handle it. Well, what does Jesus say? How do they, how do they get prepared for this cataclysmic event? Uh, there's a lot of information in these seven messages, but several things stand out. One is that Jesus is re uh, repeatedly warning them against porneia. Uh, that's a word that's often translated as sexual immorality. And in the first instance, that's what it means, sexual immorality. Um, and Jesus is warning the churches, churches not to indulge in sexual immorality. But in the book of Revelation, porneia is associated with uh, uh, alliance with or a dalliances with the porne, the harlot, uh, the city Babylon, which I believe is a figure for the city of Jerusalem. And so porneia is not merely sexual immorality, but it has to do with infidelity. And the pressure that the Christians feel during this period is that uh, things are falling apart around them. The Romans are going to start persecuting them. The Jews are persecuting them. And it seems like the safe thing to do might be to uh, enter into some kind of alliance with Judaism, to find safety in Jerusalem, to search out the harlot and find some kind of protection under the uh, auspices, or the, under the wings of the harlot. Jesus is warning them not to do that. Don't compromise with the old world that's passing away. Uh, it looks safe, but it's not. Jesus also repeatedly warns them about eating meat sacrificed to idols. And this, I think, is a warning about compromise in the other direction. They're not supposed to compromise with Judaism and revert back to the Old Covenant. And they're also not supposed to compromise with the Roman order. Uh, sacrifices to idols were part of the civic order of Rome. And participating in a civic sacrifice was a way of identifying as a citizen of Rome. And you can see why Christians might be tempted to do that. After all, if they are citizens of Rome and they are participating in these sacrifices and these festivals, then they're protected. They're Roman citizens. They have all those protections. And Jesus says they need to uh, wean themselves off of the Roman Empire, wean themselves off of old Judaism, and stand fast and not compromise in either direction. Another thing that Jesus is um, important about the, uh, the messages to the churches is the addressees of these messages. Jesus addresses the entire church, but he addresses each church through the angel of the church. Uh, sometimes uh, interpreters think that the angels are the guardian angels, spirit angels who stand guard over each church. Uh, but that doesn't make much sense because Jesus would not need to write to angels, uh, spirit angels. He wouldn't need John to write to them. That seems kind of a roundabout way to address spirit angels. I think the angels are instead human messengers, human rulers, the angels of the seven churches are the pastors or bishops of these seven churches. And Jesus is addressing them in particular and holding them responsible for clearing the church of any kind of heresy, clearing the church of anyone who is attaching uh, to, uh, uh, to idols or attaching to the porne, the harlot. Uh, Jesus wants the pastors of the churches to be intolerant of heresy. That's the way you prepare for the collapse of the world. Jesus is addressing a particular situation that happened in the first century, but Jesus' messages to the churches are still relevant to us. And as we see the world around us in upheaval seeming to decay, we need to take those messages to heart and not seek safety anywhere, not seek safety in an empire, not seek safety in a false church, but relentlessly hold to Jesus uh, and seek safety only in Him. Uh, that's the only way the church will survive and flourish in whatever kind of upheaval is ahead for us.